Welcome back to my channel. This morning we're in Cedar Creek near Sanford in southeast Queensland and something I have to address and my daughter actually told me she says dad why do you take so many videos around water and I've had people comment saying there's a lot of your videos that deal with water. Well in southeast Queensland we don't have a lot of forest. We have a lot of beaches, we have a lot of creeks and all that. We don't have major beautiful waterfalls, especially where I live. I make do and I make the best that I can. This morning we're in Cedar Creek and you can see what we're photographing this morning. A very nice archway and leading into the archway. Hard to see but there's some gargoyles with like a tower on the side. But I am faced with a dilemma this morning. I came here quite early in the morning because there are no trees down the creek here, the sun is shining right in the center of the archway. If I came later during the day, then I wouldn't have the sun right on the archway, but the sun would just be shining out the creek and I would have so much reflections that this would make it a nothing shot. So I have to make the best that I can do. And a lot of times when you go out, you don't get the perfect conditions. We have to make do with what we have. So this is what I'm doing this morning. I'm going to show a couple of shots here because it's very hard to walk around here. I didn't want to sort of walk with my video. Here are a couple of shots that I took a little bit earlier, working out where to frame my shot. I started in the middle of the creek thinking like, yeah, that would be really nice. But there was no wow factor to the image. All I could see was the arch. And I think like, hang on, OK, well, let's come back a little bit towards this side. Let's keep angling the shot. So I get more of an image of depth. When you're photographing landscapes, you want depth. You don't want just a flat image. This is what I did. I just kept walking around here. And I go like, beauty, whereabouts I am now is really good. But then when I got all my gear set up, I said, well, I want to get into the water to get a better perspective. I set up my tripod in the water. This is the image I got. Totally what I didn't want. I was way too low. The arch was way above me. No, that's not what I want. Pack everything back up and come back to where I am now. But look at the scene here. See how bright the arch is? Now, there is no way to actually get that arch properly lit and our foreground here properly lit as way. Well. The dynamic range is just way too much for this camera. So the only way we can shoot this is blending a couple of images. I call it HDR, high dynamic range photography. Some people just call it blending a couple of images. There's nothing wrong with this. I know some people don't like it. At times, this is the only way you're going to do it. Instead of just taking a way underexposed image, trying to bring out our shadows, we just blend a couple of photos. So this morning I'm using my Nikon D500, the Tekina, 11 to 20 mil at around 18 or 19 mils. I have a polarizer on, we're around water. I want the polarizer to be able to sort of cut the reflections off the water here and a six stop ND filter just to smooth out that water a bit. Let's take a shot now. So my settings are ISO 100, F11, four seconds. It's quite nice that the shadows are a little bit dark. I can easily pick those shadows up in Lightroom. My highlights are so blown that there is no detail there anymore. This is why I say we've got to blend a couple of images together. So now I'm going to come back down to about five seconds because we're going to be taking multiple photos. I want some that are slightly darker and some that are slightly brighter for the shadows. The darker image is going to be for the bridge, the archway here. The brighter images are going to be for our shadows. So we'll set the five seconds, take a shot, and it's going to start from darker photo all the way to the brighter photo. The five exposures are finished and I've nailed it on the first go. The darkest image was 1.3 seconds. Then we went to 2.5 seconds, then five seconds, 10 seconds. Then the last image was 20 seconds. This is these five images now. When I open them up in Adobe Lightroom, I select number three. I do all my editing on that image, then synchronize the settings across the five images, then export from Lightroom to Photomatix Pro. Photomatix Pro has a plugin in Lightroom, so it just exports those five images, blends them together into a composite image. Then I can return that image into Lightroom, and then I can just do a minor touch-up on the image. Sometimes add a bit of contrast, add a bit of dehaze. I could do this in Lightroom, but I find that Photomatix Pro is much better at doing this. If you don't have Photomatix Pro, then use Lightroom. Now today, this is all I can do here. There's no point in me taking any more photos. I'm very happy with what I, I got. So in closing, I just want to show you the images that I took. 
The first image here is the correctly exposed image, just has a single frame. And I did my best to try to expose it correctly. So there's no blown highlights. So I've had to pull out all the shadows from this image. The second image is the five image blend. So we took five images from being exposed for the bridge and for the shadows. And I hope you can see the differences and why sometimes blending a couple of images is so much better than a single exposure, especially if you're using a crop sensor or a, a camera that doesn't have a lot of dynamic range. So if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. I'd appreciate if you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Stay safe, enjoy your photography, and I'll see you next time.